Welcome to the meeting room at Global TV Talk Show, a broadcast service of globalbusinessnews.net. Now, here's your host, Ed Cohen. Hi, this is Ed Cohen, your broadcast host of Global TV Talk Show. This is a service of globalbusinessnews.net. I want to encourage everybody worldwide to have a look at globalbusinessnews.net. You'll find up-to-the-minute new stuff, as well as links to some of our broadcasts. And we have uh, wonderful news and information from, from providers involved in tax and legal and policy consulting uh, from around the world. So that's globalbusinessnews.net. Our website was set up by a friend of mine from Intel uh, back in 03, a long time ago. Google Analytics has been tracking our audience since then. And they say over 1.2 million reader page views from over 100 countries, of which uh, 70% are US, Canada, Mexico, Brazil, about 20% Europe, about eight or 9% Asia Pacific, and uh, 1% or so Middle East and Africa. So we definitely want to grow our audience in, in Brazil and Latin America. And I thank you very much for being on this broadcast. Let me also please try to say, hola, mus amigos, they say jam, then vindo al talk show. Hey, welcome. <laughs> and thank you very much. Uh, so uh, I want to be sure you all know my friend here, John Schultz, who's in New York, as I mentioned from International Auto Source, a sponsor. John, say hi and give us a real quick overview of yourself uh, and so these good people know uh, about you and the service you perform. Uh, Well, thanks, Ed. Um, We are International Auto Source and we are the world's largest uh, uh, vehicle dealer for expatriates moving around uh, the world. Um, we've been in business for 25 years. We've serviced over 50,000 global customers with both our assistance in purchase and leasing of new vehicles while they're on assignment, plus our international global rental car service for assignments that are 12 months uh, or less. So uh, when Ed told me about this program and it was about Brazil, I immediately signed on because on our website, our number four source of leads are customers contacting us directly from Brazil who are moving to the United States. So I'm very interested in hearing what the panel has to say today. And uh, Ed, thanks for giving us the opportunity to sponsor your show once again. Yeah, you bet. And thank you. So um, about our sponsors in about 15 minutes or so from now, uh, maybe 20, uh, we're going to take a quick break and show some video. I want to ask you all to comment about the use of video in your own businesses and how you're using it to communicate to each other as well as to transferees and uh, stakeholders, okay? So the use of video, how how are we using it? Is it through Zoom or Microsoft or Google Meets, TikTok? Uh, WhatsApp, you know, how are you doing it? What are you doing? Okay, let's talk about the future. But first, let's talk about this dreadful year. Thank God it's almost over. And and I'm looking forward to what I'm calling lucky 21, right? <laughs> and so um, let's uh, go around the panel here. Everybody quickly introduce yourselves for the benefit of our audience worldwide. Patty, please uh, know that I'm grateful to have you involved. So, Patty Tavares, am I pronouncing that right, Tavares? Yes. Well, if you pronounce it in Portuguese, it's Tavares, but that's Tavares. difficult. So, Tavares is no, perfect. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to learn. Okay. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm, sure. I'm, I'm Patty Tavares. I uh, am here today as the co-founder of Brazil Talks. Um, I have a lot of experience in human resources and a lot of experience in global mobility and policies and um, exceptions and currency and everything that comes within the package of global mobility on the corporate side. 
So it's, uh, it's where I have been working for the last years, and it's where I can share my experience. And it is an enormous pleasure to be here with you, Ed. Thank you so much oh, for the invite. I, I love what you're doing with Brazil Talks, and, and I, I'm following uh, what you guys are doing as much as possible on LinkedIn. Um, so what's happening with you in a living Real quick, um, I, are you moving people around, or is everything on hold? Yes, Unilever, to be very honest, within our region here in the Americas, we never stopped. Everybody said, you know, right in the beginning of the pandemic, we had everybody asking, oh, my God, what's going to happen to your job? Are you going to lose your job now that nobody's moving around anymore? And we were like, wow, I wish we were doing nothing because we were trying to move people around anyways in the middle of a pandemic. So um, we actually had a little bit of the lucky side, let's say. So when we had to move in uh, end of March and April, it was still possible here in Latin America, right? Because uh, the pandemic hadn't hit us hard yet. So there still were some countries with open um, boundaries and everything. So you still could do something, right? After it stopped and we couldn't do it anymore, um, then what happened was we started working on what was going to be the new normal, supposedly second semester of 2020, right? So let's get packages in order. Let's see who we can move around. Let's see what kind of the, what is the best type of assignment? Um, and everything supposed September, October, 2020. Time continued going on. And here we are, December, 2020. Um, we have started moving in the countries where we can. We are already moving globally. Um, some people between the waves, let's put it that way. Second wave hit us, hit Europe now, and uh, we stopped again, right? But packages, benefits, um, types of assignment discussion, talent discussions, none of this stopped. All of this continued exactly in the same rhythm. And I can even share with you that in the three quarters of 2020, we had more moves than we had in the year of 2019 intra-LATAM. So cool. very cool. Specific to intra-LATAM. Okay. The rest of the regions, no. But intra-LATAM, when we pulled the report, we were like, what? We had more moves in three quarters of a pandemic than we did the whole last year. So good for, good for you. That's an inspiration. Yeah. And uh, so Yana Ina, what about yourself? Busy? Yeah, actually, now I'm in a, a little bit different position. I, uh, I bring the experience of the corporate side, but during this whole pandemic thing, uh, I start in a new uh, position where uh, besides having the whole expat management for our employees, I support uh, our clients that they are on the majority in the energy sector. And we are supporting them in the recruitment and outsourcing. Of course, all the plans that we had before the, the, the whole pandemic, because my first day at work was exactly the first day that we had the, the whole uh, going home and work from home thing. So all the planning that we had from the, in the first three months of 2020, we had to reschedule, to rethink everything and uh, of course, the, the, in the oil and gas industry, uh, here in Brazil, the, when, when we talk about offshore crewing, uh, they kind of adjust, but the whole crew change, they, they, kept, they kept, kept happening. But I saw a lot of, uh, we end up putting a lot of Brazilians to cover for the expats. So it uh, was good that we had the chance to, 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 to support the local the locals, but the, 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 the expats, we kind of like had a huge reduction of the numbers. I kept some of them here for a long time because they have problems to return to, to their countries and all that. But from my side, we have a like huge reduction of uh, having people moving around. Cool. Okay. So I want to introduce uh, everybody here. Uh, Andrew Brucey, thank you very much for joining us. Why don't you quickly introduce yourself? Um, you, everyone, this is Andrew. He's uh, an executive uh, in the past with Walmart and uh, is now um, got a uh, 
what a podcast, a, broad, a broadcast podcast, right? Oh, and uh, <laughs> many things. Yes. Yeah, many things. Tell us what you're doing. Sure. Uh, so, yeah, just launched Culturistic, which is a podcast talking about cultures, uh, of how cultures interact. So, I was excited to see and I appreciate the invite, Ed, of uh, seeing this very esteemed group of uh, folks that work globally. And especially now that how we're interacting across cultures, I think this is one of the main reasons. But yeah, as Ed mentioned, I lead Vendium Global, formerly with Walmart, but uh, now we specialize in helping uh, relocation service providers, corporate mobility programs, RMCs, in incorporating in conversational AI and uh, technology solutions to enhance their programs. Okay, great. So um, are you going to show us the latest fashion in, in VR and AI? So I did just have a Zoom call with an AI that we built uh, specific around global mobility. So if anyone hasn't seen it, go to my LinkedIn. It was very, very nerdy, but it was a lot of fun. Uh, it was a lot uh, to get up to that point because at first we recorded a phone conversation with the AI and then I was thinking, well, you know, if I can have a phone call with it, what if I had a Zoom call? We're all having Zoom calls. So how well can this actually have a conversation? So we run through a full needs assessment call. Uh, she recognizes my name. She can recognize a number of things that are, again, from the nerdy aspect of it, from the natural language processing side that were pretty complex to build. But uh, yeah, and, and soon you'll actually be able to recognize uh, her facial expressions, her name's Alice, by the way, uh, her facial expressions and they'll pair well with the human. So I wasn't able to do it just yet for that call, but here soon she will be able to. Okay, Juliana, please introduce yourself. Tell us what's happening on the legal side. Yes, thank you, Edwin, first of all, uh, for having me here today. It's a pleasure. Uh, can, can you hear me well? well? Yeah, a bit of an echo. But, uh, yeah. Yes, I'm hearing an echo. I don't know why. Julie, because you're showing two. you're showing twice. Yeah, yeah maybe yeah. you have. I don't know if you're on the phone and on a laptop. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. no I was it. trying to connect on a laptop, but then yeah, I don't know. Uh, now well, it's better. Now it's better. Okay, I'm sorry for that. Well, uh, well, first of all, I would like to introduce myself. I work on the provider side, so I offer support to immigration and taxation in Brazil. I joined Relocation House the last year, I think I mentioned to you before, and uh, from our side, it's been tough a lot this year. Uh, in the beginning of the pandemic, we saw a decrease of our clients, of course, they decided to stop uh, most of the process, the ongoing processes. And then uh, we saw, as Patty mentioned, the borders reopening, and then we saw an uh, increase of the services again. And now with the second wave, we are, uh, I don't know, in a gray area still because we don't know what's going to happen, if we're going to have the vaccine or not. But uh, we are more optimi optimistic for 2021. I think uh, with the vaccine and also, um, well, things must continue. We need to still uh, support our services here. So we have a lot of process on, on hold now. And uh, we are expecting for uh, more activities for the next year. Good. Thank you very much. Mabel, hello. Hello, how? Thank you. Thank you for the invitation of participating and being here. Oh, I'd love to have you involved. Tell us <laughs> what you're into these days. What's hot? Uh, well, I'm Abel Vidal. I am partner of MV Consulting Company, which provides services specifically, specifically for global mobility, helps companies to review policies, flows, and processes in order to have a, uh, achieve an effective and a complete management, and of course, in compliance. And I am also co-founder of Master Expat, which is a global mobility training now online, and, and the program covers all, the, all the aspects of the global mobility cycle, the starting with culture and its impact, coming through global mobility management, flows, players, roles and responsibilities, 
um, going through policies, benefits, uh, benefits score and flex, compensation, uh, relocation services. Well, the whole, the whole points are the four, whole aspects of the global mobility cycle. And we have also included deep studies about immigration, labor, and tax relating to, to Brazil, to Brazilian legislation. We are 15 trainees, everyone experts in each area. And I have a, a news for next year, we will launch Master Expat Latin America, which will be the same program, but the technical matters will be related to a specific uh, countries such as Argentina, Uruguay, Chile, Colombia, and Mexico. So these are the, the plans for next year. How exciting, congratulations. Mm -hmm. Mariana, hello. Uh, please, uh, please welcome, uh, please be welcomed here and, and tell us about your difference. Oh, hello, Ed. Uh, thank you very much for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be here this Brazilian afternoon. So I'm an intercultural consultant I've been working across cultures, as Andrew just brought us, uh, for 20 years now. I'm all for sure based in Brazil, Sao Paulo, just behind me. But I work with uh, every culture in the world, of course, having partners everywhere in the world to help me with that. Uh, as for 2020, difficult year for me, for uh, intercultural consultant, for sure, we didn't have as many trainers trainings as we used to have. We were doing very well in delivering in-person team building multicultural trainings, and for, they stopped. Uh, but at the same time, we see a new area for us being developed, which is the trainings for virtual uh, multicultural teams. So we know that the more we go virtual, the more the cultural differences, they increase. So there is a new opportunity also coming out of this uh, very, very different year. <laughs> So well, that's it for now. Thank you again for inviting oh, me. Oh, thank you. We, yeah, we're going to continue our uh, panels discussions, but let's let's go on. Daniela, thank you so much, for, and I thank you and EY for wanting to participate. So, what's new from your perspective? Well, first of all, thank you very much for the invitation. It's amazing to be here, especially with my such a good friends that are participating as well. Um, I'll copy something, some words of what Mari said. It was um, not a difficult, but a different year. So we saw ourselves doing things that we, uh, the clients didn't request uh, before, such as virtual assignments, anywhere office. Uh, we had some demands on that, but very few. So it kind of changed it. So if if we say that uh, we work less or we had less demands this year because of the pandemic, I, I, I would be lying because we actually increased our services because it changed. Um, so my background, I'm, I work, uh, I'm a partner at EY. I'm responsible for global mobility in Brazil. Uh, and I'm a specialist in tax, social security and labor aspects of, the, of expatriation. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you. Okay, so, so Patricia, um, from Brazil Talks, like you, you just had a major program, didn't you? Yes, we have webinars every 15 days, and we just closed down with our last session of the year, which was the Brazil Talks first award ceremony. And we gave out a few awards, and Dani and Mari are winners of the awards. <laughs> so this year, unfortunately, or fortunately, I do not know, we had to do everything online, right? So even the prizes and the categories were online also. So for example, the webinar with the most number of registrations, the webinar with the best sur satisfaction survey, right? And that's how we did it because nice. we needed to yeah. do something to do something different, right? Yeah. Um, Dunny, and EY, uh, with her partners from Fragoman and from Anderson Tax, they won the, the, the awards for the most watched webinar. And Mari watched, got, 
got two awards because one is not enough for her. So <laughs> she got two awards. Um, one was talking actually about the intercultural difference and the other was a live that was talking about diversity. So two different topics and she actually got the awards for both of the categories. So it was it was a very different thing. It was our first year as, as Brazil Talks in Christmas we couldn't just let it go by. We had to do something. And so we racked our brains and that's what came out <laughs> last Thursday. And it was really cool. I mean, we got lots of people coming back and saying that was amazing. Thank you so much for this. And also a nice way to close off the year of this different year that brought Brazil Talks because Brazil Talks was born because of the pandemic. <laughs> so um, I can't complain of 2020. So this is leading me to ask you all to think about for the next few minutes uh, and, and then we're going to go around again. Uh, the topic is what I'm calling first time, okay? What have you done during this past year, such as what Patty was just talking about? Um, for the very first time, what did you do? Give me an example that you're willing to tell the world about. Uh, what did you do for the very first time? What is your innovation or one of them about yourself, your reinvention, or your redesigning your product to fit the new needs of the consumer, your best customers, because they have stresses. You know, think about empathy, thinking about how you communicate with your teams, how, um, some people don't like being on camera, um, and uh, others uh, love it. Like me, I love it. So I know John loves it too. Uh, Andrew, I do too. You're you're a camera hound now. You have your your weekly show now, right? Yeah. So contrary to popular belief, I'm a total introvert. And yeah. Right. A lot of this is uh, <laughs> I'm much better in front of a large crowd. Um, rather than in front of a camera and that if you uh, one of these days I need to do an outtakes video I probably don't say a lot of <laughs> that will be uh, filled with uh, sensors and whatnot but <laughs> no it's uh, I think this is a sense of the new normal of how we communicate how we deliver messaging I can write articles all day long but I think the verbal word is always more impactful so the, what the, so we're going to take a quick break, and, when, and we're going to show some TV commercials here. But when we come back, I want you to think about how are you using video, and how uh, did you reinvent yourself, just like we're hearing snippets right now. And I'm going to talk about how I reinvented myself in order to survive. <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, we're all going through changes. We're all being impacted by layoff or furlough or sudden explosion in business such as with you patty um, and congratulations you know so that's great paul let's show these videos it's only going to take uh, not even four minutes and now a word from our co-sponsors you know our programs wouldn't happen without the wonderful support of our advertisers here they are Something that's really neat is that the Bridge School partners with various organizations to provide learning for their students. For example, we partner with a major ballet company and we are able to enroll several of their students into our school. So now not only is the student able to participate in a school and have a seamless transition while they're very active in their ballet career, but now they have um, other dancers that are with them that are doing some of the same courses. So it's almost becoming a, a camaraderie where they're taking similar courses, they're working together on their ballet, and really being able to form this great partnership with these organizations to provide a needed service. A lot of times um, there are student athletes who will spend hours and hours at the gym or um, at the, the basketball courts, wherever it is. And if they're attending a traditional school, 
They're in school from eight to three. They get a quick snack and then they're at the gym for three to four hours in the evening. Coming to us and having that partnership, they're able to break that up throughout the day. They can have a morning practice, get some schooling in, have an afternoon practice, finish their schooling in the evening. So there's that flexibility. And additionally, if there are tournaments or performances, it's fantastic because if there's a week where they have shows straight through, they can take that week off of learning and then pick back up when they're done. So it offers this great flexibility. And for the program owners of these sports leagues, it is a win-win situation for them because they see this need. They see this need that their students need to make sure that they are obtaining the grades necessary to be successful adults in, in our country and in other countries. But it provides them an environment where they can be successful at both. This episode from the meeting room of Global TV Talk Show is brought to you by The Bridge School, the accredited international online private school of choice at bridgek12.org Porch Light Rental and Destination Services Reduce your renter lump sum or managed relocation costs Visit them at porchlightrental.com Cube Monk, featuring the world's first smart cube Track your goods with our advanced GPS system Welcome to the future of moving and relocation at cubemonk.com. Primestone Partners, featuring corporate, government, and developer housing solutions, as well as senior level advisory services. Find them at primestonepartners.com. And by heirs.com. With our full range of services, we can help design and manage your international relocation. Find us at heirs.com. Insured Nomads provides protection and peace of mind with health insurance, travel insurance, group, or tailored insurance for the globally mobile. Visit us at insurednomads.com. And by International Auto Source. We are the vehicle experts for expats, featuring all major brands of automobiles with flexible solutions and financing. On the web at intlauto.com. Hi, my name is Christine. I'm a nurse from the Philippines and I got to know IAS through Worldwide Health Staff Solutions and I want to thank IAS, especially to Matthew for helping me get my car um, stress-free, headache-free and so I just want to show you the car that I got. So it's a RAV4 XLE 2020. As an expat moving to the USA, relocating is exciting, but it can also be stressful. Getting a car, truck, or SUV for personal transportation is usually a high priority. That's where International Auto Source comes in. We make getting the vehicle you want for your work assignment or academic program easy, so you're ready to drive when you arrive. Our product specialists have helped over 50,000 expatriates with their personal transportation needs, making us the largest international auto retailer in the world. International Auto Source gives you flexible payment options to buy, lease, or rent a vehicle from the world's leading auto brands, arrange financing on a purchase or lease without a U.S. credit history, social security number, or driving record, get full insurance coverage, and get approved easily through our low-rate factory-backed financing programs. And because we're an authorized distributor of the world's leading automotive brands, our no-haggle prices are competitive, and the buying experience is hassle-free. We'll even guarantee your new vehicle will be ready the day you arrive. With over 20 years of experience in the global community, we are the vehicle experts for expats. We are International Auto Source.
Well, thank you very much for paying attention to that. Uh, interesting, you could see there's quite a bit of investment in all that. And of course, I'm grateful. In the new year, we're going to have some additional uh, co-sponsors coming on. And so some of that is going to be changing, uh, thankfully enlarged. So very quickly, uh, Andrew, how did you invent or reinvent yourself this year in addition to doing your, your very sharp um, one minute, two minute uh, video talk shows that we see on LinkedIn? What else are you doing that is different from what you did last year? Sure. So I, in which I appreciate, by the way. Um, so I'd say probably primarily in two main categories. Um, one in being in the diversity inclusion space. So, you know, a lot about how we work with Go Culture a lot and uh, kind of helping people, especially in these times that um, I think you were mentioning with uh, Mariana about how the intercultural space spills over to diversity and inclusion. And we've been in intercultural relations our entire careers. And so how do we use that to helping people relate to and interact with diverse others? That's essentially the same thing that uh, this morning I had a phone call with a very, very large organization. And it was funny because uh, two of the people on there were originally from India. And when we're talking about, the entire topic was around diversity and inclusion. And most often we think about that, at least in the US, of racial relations. And it's really not just that. I actually have an article of uh, that's entitled, uh, I think it's diversity and inclusion. It's not just what you think. And it's specifically because it's not just about race. It's not just about religion. It's not just about gender. It's not just about any specific category. It's about all of it and how we interact to be more productive, right? That diversity drives diversity of thought. Diversity of thought drives innovation and innovation drives revenue. And that's as business leaders, that's what we're all after. Uh, the second category is, uh, I'd say in wholly operated AI programs where Ed, you and I have talked a lot about it, what we've done with VR and uh, conversational AI, where now we have, and I'll have a, actually a video coming out specifically around this of some of the wholly operated uh, AI programs that we that we have been doing, including things like uh, virtual assignments, um, like Danielle mentioned, uh, that virtual assignments, I think, are taking off right now. And it's an example that in the past, if you were sending someone on a global assignment, you were saying, hey, earmark a million dollars and a bunch of time, and then there's a very high percentage of failure. But we recognize that there's value that comes from a global assignment experience. And even if someone's earlier on in their career that they want to have that experience and gain that leadership uh, development that they would get from it, what are the aspects of it? That probably the intercultural training, uh, the language training, and then the other pieces of working in, in intercultural environments that we can recreate through a virtual environment. And in our case, we'll have our conversational AI manage those with the support of humans. So rather than humans in uh, supported by AI, that's a fully operated AI supported by humans. If you need any human touch base, then you can uh, circle up with them. Yana, Ina, if you had a robot in your office, what would you have it do today? Uh, well, they're here to support us, right? So <laughs> we kept the, the operational side with them and we will be able to have more time to focus on the human side on the things that only us can do, right? To be empathic and empathetic. And um, yeah, as Patty always says, like I think it's the most important thing. We need to support from the the I the the the, the, the whole robot thing and the, as much as we can, so we can focus on the human touch and the things that only us can do. So yeah. How oh, cool. Mariana, if you had a robot in your office today, what would you have it do? Answer to my emails. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't answer emails anymore. You know, I don't know. One thing that I've been doing a lot in this year is Up answering to, to WhatsApp. <laughs> so now it's only WhatsApp. I can't go to my emails anymore. So I need someone to take that for me. That would be a, a, a very good help. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay, yeah. Juli oh. Juliana, in the legal business, well, how would you use a robot if you had um, uh, a Siri or, or an Alice or, uh, or a John Schultz or, or what? <laughs> yes, no. <laughs> We are still trying to find the balance here because on, on one for one side, we rely much more from the technology, you know, but on the other hand, we need to still have the human touch, the human being side, you know, so we are still uh, trying to adapt ourselves to this. You asked uh, what we did for the very first time, and I think that's that's the, the main point for us at Helocation House because we still want and need the technology side, but we are still trying to find the balance, you know. So for the for the legal side, we usually we do that uh, virtually. So I think this is not the, the big problem here. The, the problem was the people that couldn't leave the country. And because of that, they became fiscal residents in Brazil as we didn't have exemptions from our government. But um, yes, we are trying to adapt and reinvent this way to keep the, the balance between one thing and another. Yeah, John Schultz uh, with International Auto Source, of course. Um, if you had a robot in your office, would you help people get credit faster so they could buy your cars? I think it would be very similar to what Mariana was saying. The um, routine daily tasks that are associated with the purchase or lease of an automobile, uh, contacting uh, motor vehicle bureaus to arrange for licensing and registration, um, filling out of, of the uh, registration paperwork, and the paperwork associated with getting title and insurance. Those things can be done by an Alice uh, or, or uh, a Siri uh, with, with AI. And that would allow our professional sales consultants to do what they do best, which is touch the customer virtually uh, through phone and through uh, Zoom calls and provide uh, good guidance and, and service to our customers. So, the ability to have uh, uh, an Alice to do that uh, mundane work uh, that takes so much time uh, would, be, would be wonderful. And I'd also teach it how to make coffee for me. <laughs> so uh, this is not an um, opportunity for sales pitches, although we are all dropping hints here, but um, John uh, sets up partnerships around the world uh, and uh, helps people get cars. It's an employee benefit, right, John? It, it is. It depends on the assignment. Some people have an employer-sponsored uh, budget for an automobile, and some do not. But uh, when people move uh, in many countries, they quickly realize that for security, for safety, for personal freedom, the ability to go when and where they want to go on their own schedule, they need an automobile. And so yeah. we work with people around the world to provide that service. Patty, um, you've done a great job. So you, your first time was Brazil Talks, of course, your first time innovation. But within, within uh, your job, um, your day job, <laughs> To the extent, I was going to ask which one of them. <laughs> <laughs> to the extent you have uh, wherewithal to talk about this or the ability to talk about it, um, what kind of innovations have you uh, input within your own sphere of influence at the table uh, with other stakeholders? Um, if you're not already, well, let me ask you, are you part of this talent, global talent mobility pipeline? and the role of handling the mobility aspect. Uh, is, that, is that cool or not cool? Yes, it's partially cool. Let's put it that way, because um, it does depend a lot on the stakeholder that's sitting on the other side of the table, right? So we have stakeholders that want us and that need us and that depend on us. 
to help them take the decision, to explain which one is better. Um, we always have that stakeholder that doesn't expatriate somebody every month or every year. So they need to be refreshed of what everything that Global Mobility has and offers. So it really does depend a little bit on the stakeholder. What I saw for the first time this year um, was a greater call out to Global Mobility. We, we need you. Can you help us here? All right, I think um, the business understood, not only the business, but the HR business partners also, they understood that if they bring us to the table, things happen better and faster than when they decide something on their own without really understanding what they're deciding and then come to us. And then we point out and say, look, this won't work. This might not be the best option. So there's a negotiation time there that us, they understood that us being together from the beginning, things happen faster and in better quality. So I so, think that, and, yeah. and it's the first time that I actually see, and, and I'm not talking only Unilever, I'm talking many companies that came to Brazil Talks and spoke about this, um, how the company mindset is changing, which is good well, for us, good. right? Yeah. Right for us. So I want to go around here to get everybody's take on this, okay? So Daniela, then Mabel, and Yanaina, Mariano. So uh, Daniela, from EY perspective, is this a cost-effective thing? for the stakeholders to understand this? It sounds like a no-brainer to me. Yeah. No, I, I was going to mention, Patch, because um, especially, again, with all those changes, uh, the risk increases, right? So when you talk about uh, permanent establishment, for example, we are not talking about personal taxes. We are talking about corporate taxes. Imagine a, a, a company being taxed on another country just because someone is working there. So I think when the risk increases, um, the, the attention gets, you know, bigger. Um, so, and this is where I call all my mobility uh, folks, my uh, and our mobility uh, friends to step up and say, hey, uh, I can help you here. There is a risk. Have you considered this? Just don't send expatriates all over and, and don't talk to me. You have to talk to me. I have to point out there is a risk here. There is an opportunity, but blah, blah, blah. And then call the providers to help you guys with that. So I think I think this, uh, what Patricia mentioned is 100% uh, right. So we are seeing more mobility folks uh, being invited to sit on the table to make most important decisions. Um, and I, I think it's most uh, because of the risk. I wish in the future we can consider mobility folks also to be seated on the table, not because on, on risk, but because of the talent, because on the pathway of the, of the talent. But I think it's a beginning. May I ask you, uh, Daniela, about the tax of people working from home? Is, is, this, is this a crazy making thing or is it easy to yeah. understand? It's, it's true. We, it's, it's crazy because, um, for example, we have even three countries involved sometimes. Let's say, for example, a new U.S. citizen who was expatriated in Brazil and now is receiving through the Brazilian payroll, but it's still a, a U.S. Uh, taxpayer and then moves to Spain to work there because he has, I don't know, a beach house there and wants to work from them, from this place. So you have three countries involved. So you have to check which country has a double treaty with the other country. And then you, ha you have to check social security aspects and labor aspects, not to mention the, the PE issue, right? So yeah, yeah, it's, it's not easy. It's not a piece of cake, you know? Yeah, go there. You feel more comfortable working in, in whatever country. No, you have to check all the aspects involving on this uh, remote work, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, Juliana, is that what, what would you like to add to that, Juliana? Yes, for sure. I totally agree with Dani. It's true uh, with regards to the, the fiscal, the tax side. And also, uh, we are facing a hard moment with the virtual assignment as well, because we are still in a gray area. We don't, we didn't, we don't know, we, identif we didn't identify it already. Uh, the situation that fits for each assignee and we still are under a process. It is, in my opinion, I think it's a long process until we have uh, a defined uh, profile of assignee that can do that, that is able 
to to accept this kind of virtual assignment. I think uh, from now on we are going to discuss more more and more these. Uh, of course, 2020 brought that us to us, but we uh, still have to adapt. I think we have a lot of things to be careful. Because uh, it's not, uh, I think it's like Danny mentioned, it's not the, the simple like that. I want to go to work from another country and that's it. Even, even though uh, in Brazil, when we are talking about uh, working from other cities inside Brazil, we see, we saw a lot of difficulties here. So is, I think it's a long process until there. Yeah, Marvel. Yes, the, um, I confirm what uh, Juliana and Danny, and Danny said. This was very huge to discuss and actually was one of the, the main points of the Brazil talks. And that's, as Patricia mentioned, it was a very big audience because everybody that had in mind and it was a big discussion, what is going to happen, what will be the impacts. So I think this is something new. It will take some time for the companies to adapt, to learn more. So um, we are in this, in this process of, of knowing, studying, and see what's going to happen. But this is something that arrived. Uh, it's a trend, and I think we will, it will remain. So we have to, to study a bit deeply. We don't have all the answers at the moment. Yeah, thank you. Yana, Ina, do, do people in the energy sector work from home? Uh, it's more complicated, of course. Uh, everyone in the... In the uh, HR and uh, that normally works in the office, everyone is working from home, but uh, it's kind of impossible to proceed with the operation. So the, the vessels, they're still working, the platforms, they're still operating. So uh, it's, it, it's a public that we cannot, we cannot consider that, okay, it's not gonna happen, people will work from home, it doesn't, it doesn't apply. So, yeah. uh, but I, I Taking the the, the, the the topic that you mentioned, I think it's, I like to see the good in the middle of the chaos. So I think that this, this year it's uh, open for us, like a lot of opportunities for us to show that uh, global mobility is a strategic. We need to be at the table to support the important decisions when we are talking about talents, when we are talking about relocating people and we are preparing the talents for future expatriations and all the impacts that they are mentioned, not only about the tax and everything else. So I think it's a year that we will open a lot of opportunities for us to, and it's for us to, to guarantee that we will guarantee this space for the future years. Great. So Yana, you know, are you still involved in your social uh, activities um, of, uh, you know, being helpful to uh, NGOs and, people in need. Yes, yes, I love that. Actually, one of the things that this whole crazy, crazy thing brought here, as I mentioned, I start with without this year. So uh, I, 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 I end up having this space to, to implement uh, a diversity uh, com uh, committee, uh, not only here in Brazil, but in Americas. So we are working on that and it's been really, uh, it's been amazing. It's what moves me. So it's been a great opportunity because I think as well that the whole pandemic thing uh, brought the light on the how important it is to, to guarantee the support independent on which diversity we are talking about and how important it is to understand all the needs for everyone that doesn't matter if we are in the same, uh, if we are in the same tournament, but we are dealing in different ways we need everyone has like uh they need different type of sports people with kids with uh special needs and all that so i think that was another uh light that brought this whole pandemic thing on how important it is to give an attention when we are talking about diversity mariana in <laughs> terms of culture um uh yeah indeed bravo um <laughs> it, our Talk to us a little bit. Uh, you're talking to the world now through this, okay? Um, cultural differences from a business management point of view, from uh, say, Manaus, Recife, uh, Sao Paulo, uh, Rio, uh, Brasilia, 
uh, is it different? Is the business culture different in each of those places? Sure, Ed. <laughs> Regional differences are huge in Brazil. We say the south of Brazil is uh, to Bahia, what Germany is to Brazil. <laughs> so communication style, punctuality, uh, relationship versus results. Uh, yeah, we can see all those cultural di dimensions inside the country. Uh, when we talk about regional difference. So well, I've delivered a lot of trainings only about regional differences inside Brazil. So if I want someone from Curitiba where Patti and Mabel lives to go to the north of Brazil, they will have a culture shock. They need training for sure. <laughs> yeah, great. Now, what about the way a business manager, let's just talk about Sao Paulo and Rio for a sec. Um, the way a, a business manager, uh, a line manager, and nothing to do with mobility, but a line manager, would it depend on, uh, well, what I'm trying to say is, what's the impact of culture on how that business manager uh, is going to look at managing a project that the boss gives the manager? The role of culture, male, female, older, younger, white beard or black beard or what you know <laughs> how um, it's all different right everything is different worldwide well m maybe you're asking to the wrong person but for <laughs> me everything is culture <laughs> right uh, actually if i can just go back a little bit to that the uh, the discussion before i think that the the challenge of the pandemics actually highlights the skills we global mobility global mobility people, we have always used it in our lives, which is flexibility, adapt, adapt, adaptability, learning how to deal with differences. And here I want to bring back something that Andrew brought brilliantly, that is diversity is not only about race or not only about sexual orientation or gender. Uh, and we interculturalists, we have been using cultural intelligence to deal with differences, any kind of differences. And people in the global mobility field, they have always been doing this. And now they have the spot on them to show how to deal with this virtual and globalized and scared world. So I think that more than ever, our skills are being seen from the world perspective as something that is mandatory because culture is everything. <laughs> right, thank yeah. you. John Can Schultz, I compliment I know you... just a little, a little bit there, Ed? One, one sec, John has to take a, 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 a plane somewhere. <laughs> you have to go somewhere. <laughs> I, I have another meeting to go to, Ed. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, thank you very much for sponsoring and being involved. Uh, he has uh, partnership deals available uh, worldwide. Uh, so please get get in touch with John Schultz. Thanks again for being here. You're welcome. And we are actively looking for partners in Brazil. Thank you, Ed. Okay. Merry Christmas. Yeah, Happy thank New you. Year. Thank you, John. Happy Patty, holidays. Patty, back to you. Yeah. So I just wanted to compliment a little bit what Mari's saying. Um, it's perfect what she said. It all depends on culture. But there's a culture here as line managers that we can't forget, which is the organizational culture. So independent of everything uh, that you're doing, right? Independent of your style, because each manager has a different style. Each person has a different culture. Like, like Mighty said, Mabel and I are from the south of Brazil. And if you go to the northeast of Brazil, it's totally different. Then if you go to the north of Brazil, it's even more different, right? Um, but we do have to follow as much as we want to in, in, make it individual, we have to follow the organizational culture also. So I think it, and that depends also on where the headquarters of the company is, right? If you have a company that's headquartered in the, in the Nordic area in Europe, it's different from a company that's nor, based in, in the UK or based in California, right? So uh, there's a lot of adaptation. The difference of the global mobility professional, and here I'm gonna say that we're the best, I'm sorry, but I have to say that is we've always been virtual and we've always been dealing with all these different cultures. So it wasn't the pandemic that brought this on us. We just grew more because people are coming to us asking how to act. 
What do I do? How do I deal with this? What can I do? Can you help me? And which is great for us, right? And that's why I think it's, uh, that's why I think we're a brilliant community. I have to say that. So we're coming to a close. Uh, we could talk forever, I think. Uh, Andrew, why don't you do a quick 30, 60 seconds here on what Patty was just talking about? Yeah, so I, I think that's absolutely brilliant. And that's actually one of the reasons why we pivoted into diversity and inclusion as well and, and trying to teach those lessons um, where we've talked about a number of things on this call, uh, one being tax compliance. So I think that's a space where mobility should be brought into the business more and especially right now. So a great example in the US, we have, I, I'm going to just say this out loud that I'm, this is a blanketed statement, but all, all, literally every, uh, maybe not, but uh, most Fortune 500 companies are out of tax compliance because of the interstate taxation, where people have gone to different states, they've uh, previously were working in Silicon Valley, now they're living in Texas, or they uh, moving different states and working from different states, or working from other countries and not notifying their HR, and then getting their tax reporting done appropriately. Uh, secondarily to that is in uh, helping diversity and inclusion programs where it's it's interesting to me because diversity and inclusion, especially in the US, has been brought up as a new uh, topic. Like this is a new feature that we need to talk about and let's figure out how to do this and we're re recreating the wheel that we've all been working in for decades and how to help people across cultures because a great example that we do when we meet with uh, a lot of our clients when we have any of our design thinking sessions and, and talk with them and have them identify their culture, you recognize that your next door neighbor or the person across the hall from you or someone that you've worked with all of your life may have such a complex background that you were never aware of. And thus the organization was never utilizing those benefits. So I think we can incorporate our, what makes us diverse and therefore what makes us unique and powerful into our professional profiles that will help the organization and when we help organizations blend those and help those people be cohesive despite being different that's what's going to make the workforce in the future well uh, you know when i have as guests type a personalities like you guys my job is really easy but now as we're coming to a close here let's go around the table here mariano what do you have to say to take this off the air here well me the first okay so just embrace the differences even a very different year as we just had embrace everything it learned to us and let's have a better 2021 hey amen my bell you're on mute you mute i'm mute, mute my bell Okay, uh, we are dealing with, with changes we are in the way we work, we study, we socialize, we consume, we do shopping, everything. So let's keep the best of that and, um, and be very positive and, and, and learn what was very positive and take to the new year and to the, and to the life. Actually, uh, technology was one of the things that was very positive in our life. They gave us a lot of opportunities. They gave for my private and my professional life. So this is something that I would like to keep and improve for, for the life, the contact yeah. with the technology. Well, I, I want to stay in contact with you too. And I want to come <laughs> and visit you uh, in that beach. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you're very welcome. <laughs> and, and Juliana, again, thank you for uh, being a leader here. Thank you, Ed. I would say uh, to keep the curiosity for 2021, to making new connections, to creating new possibilities of working and the way we deliver our services, uh, the way we, we are dealing with all of this, uh, homeschooling and husband and all this new environment. So <laughs> I think this is uh, the main thing for me to keep the curiosity to improve ourselves and to to be our better. Okay, now I invite everybody as we continue on this roundtable um, to send me an article or a blog 
for me to publish in our new magazine. Actually, it's not new. Uh, Global HR, Global PR has been around almost 20 years. Only now it's just online. <laughs> and I've been spending so much time building this up. Uh, I've let slide the radio. I've let slide the publication, but it's all there on my site. We're just going to bring it forward as we go into the new year. Uh, so um, if you have, it doesn't cost anything. Uh, I've got, I got plenty of advertisers there, but always looking for more, but uh, you get, it's all free. And it, but you have to be careful because it's worldwide free access 24 seven. And you just have to keep that in mind. Yana Ina, thanks so much for being on the program. Uh, it's great to see you evolve uh, and into the leader that you've obviously always wanted to be, and it seems to be a natural fit. So all success to you. Um, so uh, do you see your role expanding, uh, your positions, responsibilities, the volume of work expanding in, as we look at the spring? Thank you so much, Ed. Thank you for your words. Thank you for the opportunity. It's always great to connect with you. Um, yes, uh, I, I'm a positive person. I always see that the challenges are an opportunity for us to get to the next level. So I think 2020 has been, uh, it's been, uh, we all learn a lot. We are learning about ourselves, about our opportunities, about what we can do, about doing things in a different way. So uh, I think that we need to take it all. We need to, of course, we need to focus on the good, but we need to keep in mind everything that challenges us to push us to, to see the new opportunities. So, uh, and yes, I see a lot of opportunities. I'm really looking forward for opportunities, not only here in Brazil, but the whole Latin America. Well, thank you. Daniela, thank you for being involved. Uh, so EY's activity around Latin America is, is huge, isn't it? it you're, you've got tentacles everywhere. And uh, what do you see happening in, say, uh, Panama and uh, Argentina, Chile? Well, first of all, thank you very much. It's, it was great to be here with you guys. Um, we, we have, we're divided uh, in um Last, we are last. Uh, so Brazil, Chile, and, and Argentina and Paraguay. We have Latin North that covers uh, Panama, and then we have we have um, Americas. So I didn't understand the question about uh, Argentina and Panama. Well, just uh, the activity level. Uh, you know, are there relocations going on? Ah, uh, we we. We, we have seen more in the past uh, movies, moves to Argentina and, and to Panama. I think uh, Pach and Mabel, Mabel definitely knows more about, about Argentina. I think our hermanos are not so good right now, so, but hopefully they will get back on track in a very near future. It's what we hope. But everybody says that Brazilian doesn't like Argentinos. This is not true. We love Mabel and we love our hermanos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. We'll do a meeting there someday. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Patty, thanks so much for being uh, my leader uh, and the uh, bridge in, back into Brazil. Thank you. No, thank you, Ed, for the opportunity. It's wonderful to be here. Um, it's the last session I'm doing in 2020. So, and, and I picked very well the last session I wanted to be on. So I think it's going to, <laughs> it, it's a pleasure to be here. I think um, just answering Dunny on the Argentina part, Argentina was a very complicated country this year for us to send people in or to take people out because they did close their borders 100%. So even for Argentinians, only on humanitarian flights and, and this kind. And um, the other thing that we had, and this was not because of the pandemic, was happening since October or even I think a little bit earlier, May not last year, was the maxi devaluation of the currency. So it was a very big issue, restrictions to, uh, to remit money outside of the country for the individuals, for the companies. Um, all these restrictions that the Argentinian government put uh, ended up reducing the number of assignments into Argentina, definitely. And many companies took people out of Argentina before the pandemic because of the money restriction, right? You can't pay somebody in Argentina, they can't take money out of the country. 
Um, the, con the company can't send money out to a, a, a co another country to be able to buy raw material, to pay the salaries of the ex expats or whatever they have to do. They couldn't do that either. So it was a, a very difficult period for all the companies that were investing in Argentina in relation to the expat community, okay? Um, in relation to 2020, uh, I'm like Janaina, I'm a very positive person. I see, I saw good things coming out of 2020. One of them is Brazil Talks, but I did have other good accomplishments this year also. Um, so I'm actually happy with 2020. And my message to people is we learned a lot in 2020. What we have to do is a filter of what we want to take with us to 2021. What we didn't like, we learned, but we didn't like leave it there. Don't even take it over, right? But if you liked it and you felt everybody grew because something we had to learn. So let's not stop this growth. Let's continue growing in 2021 because it's for everyone. It's not only my personal growth, it's for everyone. So let's take that. And um, the other thing that I think is important, which is something that I always like to say is, yes, we need technology, but no, we can never lose the human touch. We're dealing with people, we're dealing with families, we're dealing with children, we're dealing with culture, with everything we're dealing needs a human touch behind it. And we're the people there to give the human touch. So never forget that, be, be that your um, memo in life, I think, your motto in life. I think that's really important. Um, it is mine. And wow, not only with my, yeah, not only with my expats, with everybody. Uh, people here work with me in, at Brazil Talks and they know how important that is for me. So that's my message to 2021. Thank you. Thank you all <laughs> for being my guests on Global TV Talk Show. I welcome you to come back in the new year. So let's sign off. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays to everyone. Happy holidays. Thank you. Thank you Thank you so Happy holidays. Bye-bye. Bye. It's been wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for joining us in the meeting room at Global TV Talk Show. Have a wonderful day and stay safe.